Uh, hello, thank you. It's uh, good to be here. I happened to walk into the room and they said, hey, you're the MC now. Uh, but uh, how long's Hacker Court? There's been a ninth, nine, ninth year. And uh, uh, I was there for, I think, the very first one. And, and uh, it's, uh, I've been involved in it uh, off and on uh, over, over the years. It's a fun little uh, thing. This is exactly how regular court works, OK? <laughs> There is a completely 100% accurate. So, uh, you know, everyone else sits at a big table. The judge stands back in the back and, you know, waits and stuff. No, it's uh, mainly or all the boring parts of court are going to be skipped, and the good parts that are going to be pertinent to what's going on is what's mainly going to be presented to everyone. So let's go through and uh, introduce everyone. We'll talk about who they are. Our uh, judge is... Uh, uh, Richard Salgado, uh, he's the one in the uh, in the uh, judge robe, <laughs> which he got from Judges R Us, I guess. And uh, but uh, he's a professor at uh, Stanford Law. And uh, let's see, our uh, where's uh, Carol? Carol is down front. She is our court clerk, our bailiff, and uh, no longer the MC. And she's the one that kind of puts this together every year. This is kind of her baby. So there she is. Uh, Prosecutor, Mr. Uh, Paul Ohm uh, from the University of Colorado. Uh, on defense, we have uh, Kurt, I always get your name wrong. Opsal. Kurt Opsal, who's with the uh, EFF. And, uh, and we also have uh, Kevin Bankston, who's also uh, with the EFF, uh, who's also here. Yeah, very good. Uh, uh, we have our... Uh, our, our case agent, uh, Richard uh, Stroker, uh, who is being uh, portrayed by uh, uh, John Klein, who is right here, uh, who uh, for some reason got out of uh, working at uh, a financial company to come here and, uh, and play dress up. And uh, uh, let's see here, Carol is also playing the role of uh, Maria Batali, Batali uh, the director of security at My Twit Face. Uh, the uh, company in question. We have uh, <laughs> Biz Zuckerson, the CEO of uh, My Twit Face, being portrayed by uh, Mr. Uh, Richard Thiem here. Uh, Joel Hobbs, the defense expert name. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. Oh, that's left over? <laughs> they filled in his name, actually. See, it's just like regular court. They get things wrong on the slides all the time. Anyway. Uh, David Kane Perry, who's right down here, uh, recently engaged. Uh, if you saw his, if you saw his talk earlier today, he actually proposed from a slide during his talk at Black Hat. So he is the ultimate nerd. He wins. Uh, and then our uh, defendant in uh, my cohort in crime, uh, Weasel, down there. Uh, he is the uh, lead coder, and he has. Vaporaspora, that's the uh, company, I assume, that, uh, the, oh, the project that uh, the, uh, the evil uh, league coder, uh, I shouldn't say evil, that's <laughs> actually far from evil. His attorneys say he's far from evil anyway, but uh, he's a fellow guy from NMRC. Anyway, these are the cast of characters here, and uh, I think, are we uh, ready to? Uh, Just a quick schedule. Oh, yeah, here's the schedule. Uh, I'm not going to read through it. You guys can figure it out. This is, this does span over a break, and uh, you all are, I guess, welcome at that point to take a bio break, but come right back and bring your friends, et cetera, et cetera. You know, text them, tell them to get in here, et cetera. Um, so with that, I think we're ready to get going. So uh, do I have a? Bang the podium. Okay, hold on here a sec. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. All rise, Hacker Court is now in session. The Honorable Richard Salgado presiding. You may be seated. You may be seated. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen uh, and counsel. I see that the jury has been impaneled and has been sworn, all 12 of you. Uh, Council, would you please enter your appearances? I'll start with the uh, government. 
good afternoon, Your Honor. Paul Ohm, representing the United States of America. Thank you. Defense. Kurt Opsahl, representing the defendant. Kevin Bankston for the defendant. For the defendant. <laughs> Thank you, counsel. Uh, before we get, begin formally, I want to thank the members of the jury for uh, participating today in one of the most important civil uh, duties that you can fulfill and for not, uh, for not being creative enough to think of a way to avoid uh, the service today. And I'd like on behalf of the government uh, to thank you and express my gratitude for uh, your performing the obligations that you have as citizens in this country to ensure that the judicial system is fair and impartial. Uh, let me describe briefly before we begin how the trial is going to proceed. It's a criminal case. That means that the charges are being brought by the United States, the prosecution represented here by uh, Mr. Paul Ohm, against the defendant uh, who's being represented by counsel who's introduced themselves already. The indictment in this case is a, a document that sets out the charges against the defendant. And in this case, there are three charges that have been alleged by the government. Uh, before I go through those, let me say that well, all this document is is a, a finding uh, by the grand jury that there's probable cause to believe that the defendant has committed the uh, counts that are charged in the indictment. But it is not proof uh, that the defendant is guilty. It is your job to determine whether there has been enough evidence to establish that the defendant is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt or not. In this case, the defendant is charged with three counts. One is eavesdropping illegally on oral communications. The second count is that the defendant illegally intercepted electronic communications. And the third count is that the defendant uh, accessed a computer and obtained information without authorization to do so. Now, this is just a summary of the charges. You'll be getting much more detailed description on the elements that the government has to prove uh, in order to establish a case of guilt against the defendant. For any count, the defendant must be found not guilty if there is not a unanimous verdict uh, in favor of the government that there is a, uh, the defendant is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. The first step in this process is going to be opening statements by uh, the government. And if the defense wishes, the defense can then follow with their opening statements. Then we will move on to the presentation of evidence. That's the evidence that you'll be considering in determining whether the defendant is guilty or not, not the opening statements. Those are just statements of counsel. Uh, we will go through the witnesses of the uh, prosecution first, and the defense will have the opportunity to cross-examine. Then we will turn to the defense, and if the defense has witnesses that they would like to call, we will be hearing from the defense witnesses. After that, I will be instructing you on the uh, elements of the crimes that are being charged. You will hear closing arguments to the extent counsel wishes to present those closing arguments. And then you will deliberate, and you will have to determine whether the government has proved its case against the defendants. <coughs> so with that in mind, let's get started with uh, opening statements. Uh, Mr. Ohm, do you have an opening statement? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I do. I'll move down here. My athleticism for the day. Look at that. Um, Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, thank you very much once again for your service. I wanted to echo what the judge said. Uh, the government, the United States of America, thanks you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to help us talk about what happened here and what brings us to this room. My name is Paul Ohm, as you've heard, and I represent the United States of America. This is a case about a brazen attack on privacy. If you look at defense table, You'll see a gentleman, perhaps not dressed as nicely as he should be for his day in court. <laughs> that man, Weasel, is the reason we're all here today. He is a disgruntled ex-employee of my twit face. Now, I know that many of you probably are aware of my twit face. Please put out of your mind what you know about the company, uh, and I'm sure there are even users of the company here. Uh, but allow us, through the witnesses, to present the evidence in this case, uh, because this is a case about this man, Weasel, and what he did to my twit face. He was a man who was once trusted by the company. He was an employee. He was allowed into the inner sanctum of the company. He left under less than savory circumstances, and then he abused that trust. 
He took what had been given to him by the people who work at this company and essentially threw it on the ground and stamped it underfoot and abused the privacy and trust. But it's worse than that. He chose to victimize not only the company, but also a particular individual, the CEO of the company, Biz Zuckerson. And you'll hear from Biz soon. And you'll be shocked, I believe, to learn what this man did to Biz Zuckerson. He infiltrated this man's laptop, this poor innocent victim. He sat and took control of all of the functionality of that laptop, turning it into a powerful tool of privacy invasion and surveillance. He turned on the video camera to watch what Mr. Zuckerson was doing in the privacy of his home with his friends. He periodically took screenshots to see the private communications that Mr. Zuckerson would have with his colleagues and compatriots. You should begin to see a picture of this man sitting in Mr. Zuckerson's bedroom, in his bathroom, in his kitchen, in his living room. Wherever that laptop went, this man would follow. And thankfully, fortunately, we have laws. We have laws that both punish people for doing things like this man did, and laws that deter others who would follow in the example led by people like this. And you, the jury, are here today to see if these laws will do justice. You will also hear some testimony today about motive. What would drive an individual to do something like I described? But I want you to be careful. This isn't a morality play. This isn't about uh, weighing whether or not anger or greed or jealousy or whatever motive it is justifies something like this. This is about a man so driven by all of the motives that drove him here today who continues today to benefit directly and significantly from the acts he did. And so there's going to be a lot of fight about why he didn't, why he didn't do it. But at the end of the day, this isn't about uh, was he right or was he wrong. It was did he do what the law forbade him from doing. And the last thing I want to say, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is these internet-based cases can be quite complicated. You will hear a lot of technical jargon and lingo. It's my job as the attorney to guide the witnesses to explaining what happened today. But understand one thing about this case. This isn't a complicated case that turns on an advanced knowledge of computer networks that requires a PhD to comprehend. No, this is a case where the main proof that the act was done was spoken by the defendant himself. This is a case where the defendant confessed to everything that I've alleged that he has done. And you will hear, through the case agent in this case, the words of the defendant upon arrest confessing to the crime. And so it is for you to sort out some of the other details. The judge will inform you of your duties and, and tell you how to interpret the law. Uh, but that will come at the end of the argument. We think, the government thinks, that after our presentation at the evidence, after the defendant uh, has what he has to say, if he wants to say anything at all, will lead you to the only <coughs> verdict that is supported by the facts, and that's a verdict of guilty. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Rohn. Mr. Opsall? Thank you. Thank you. May it please the court, Your Honor, Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my name is Kurt Opsall, counsel for the defendant. Together with my colleague, Kevin Bankson, over here at this table, I'm proud and privileged to represent Mr. Weasel. I'm proud to represent Mr. Weasel because he is a hero. Faced with a near constant erosion of privacy on social networks like my Twitface, he left that company and he created Vaporospora, a nonprofit, peer-to-peer, open source, privacy protective, full featured social network at no cost to the user. Weasel only wished to compete with my Twitface in the marketplace of ideas. But the marketplace of ideas is nothing if the public is kept in the dark about the truth, the truth about my Twitface. And that is the motive that you will see. The motive that Mr. Weasel had was to inform the public about the truth. And so they could see what Mr. Zuckerson has been up to, what he was planning with my twit face, and understand.